Thanks very much, Umron, as we have this opportunity to be here as a sponsor meeting. What is a WIS and why it is important to confirm it is a wheezing sound? Noisy breathing is very well-known clinical sign. So in my presentation, I'm going to say about breath sounds classification and then the clinical importance on the breath sounds detecting. In normal, we have the trachea sound, lung or vesicular sounds, and bronchial breathing. As abnormal, we have uh, two groups, musical sounds and non-musical sounds, and a mixed, the one which is squawk. Our wheeze is in the group of musical respiratory sounds. Two years later, it was another paper that came up. It was by task force of ERS as the report of this task force. It is lung sounds when we detect them from the chest or respiratory sounds anywhere detected from uh, the mouth or the neck or from any way or through the naked ear. And we have rub, grunting, snoring, cough, Whiz, it is a high-pitched heard with or without stethoscope, especially during expiration. It is produced by obstruction of airflow within intrathoracic airways. We can in this way detect asthma, that is the clinical importance of detecting correctly the breath sounds, especially wheezing. Yes, it is. We can see through this paper the adventure, I could say, of lung sounds, breath sounds. There were 12 experts and two recorded sounds. We had uh, the possibility to divide them, to nominate them as one of them according to these prototypes. It was a mess. The experts couldn't find any agreement. The agreement was very poor, classifying the recorded sounds. The essence of our clinical point is to confirm if it is a breath sound, crackle or whiz. Uh, so in our case, it is uh, quite important to be sure that it is whiz or not whiz. If doctors have really difficulty to give a name, to recognize the sounds, we can understand how important it is to get the correct recognition, being as simple as we can with doctors and patients or parents also. The take-home messages of this short presentation uh, are the following then. 200 years after stethoscope usage, still more difficult to describe than to distinguish breath sounds. Crackles and whiz are well recognized. The usage of terms varies widely, using different terms the same sound. An objective recognition and description would be ideal. The final assessment is a synthetic clinical procedure. Whiz can be produced by different clinical entities. How can we improve our understanding of wheezing and uh, how can we overcome the disagreement between the families and uh, the physicians? The struggle of pediatricians and patients, parents with a wheezing child. Are all reported wheezing to really described by parents? Of course, no. The second question is of for us, for the pediatric pulmonologists and pediatricians, is all that wheezes, asthma? Again, no. Why is it important to recognize wheezing? Because uh, if we are talking about wheezing, then we should know the benefits of definition and treatment and prevention of wheeze. Unfortunately, we don't have any gold standard to diagnose asthma. Wheezing is the most important tool for us in order to get 
appropriate medical treatment, you should diagnose wheezing. Most of the kids in the emergency rooms are receiving antibiotics due to some terminology called as bronchitis, or I'm not sure whether it is pneumonia or not, that let's give antibiotic. If you cannot call the lung sound as wheeze, it is a problematic one, and most of these kids are receiving antibiotic. And now the personalized medicine is fashionable, and in the future, I think we will be dealing with these issues much more often. So we should decrease the anxiety levels of children and the parents. So it should be a patient-focused approach. And if you can say it is wheezing, then you can assure the patients and parents that their disease is not a severe one. This is another old study, but nice, because when you look at uh, the severity of the wheezing, we can see here, if the wheezing is easily heard, the agreement is high, near 95% of the patients. If the wheezing is heard easily, also a doctor found it easily. But if there is barely, you can see here, uh, this agreement is going up. And the interesting point is the figure two. When you look at the lung function's peak expiratory flow rates, if you hear the wheezing easily, peak expiratory flow rate is something around 55%. If it is, there is none, it is above 90%. If the parents are hearing wheezing at home easily, you can just ask them, directly rush into the emergency room because uh, maybe there will be a problem, a risk for hypoxia or so on. Socioeconomic condition affects this. Mother's edu education affects this. If the mother is well-educated, they can have more agreement with physicians than the others. If the mother had asthma, if the patient had recurrent wheezing, uh, the agreement increases. So it is a uh, benefit for the history taker to ask these and then to evaluate these to be uh, much more accurate about the wheezing. Of course, the age of the children is important. If the parents are talking about a child at three years of age, the agreement between the physician and the parents are 80%. But if the child is 11 years of age, it goes up to 92%. So if the child is getting elder, then the chance of being agree with the parents are getting higher. The first episode of wheezing is always tricky. Here you can see if the patient has fever, the patient can be reported false. The parents can report false. But if there is accompanying tachypnea, you can trust on the parents much more reliably. Again, it's the same for the wrong chi and so on. In the end, again, parents know it best. If they report true Vs, true positive Vs, you can see here asthma prevalence is nearly 20%, but if there is false positive, it is 4%. So if there is an agreement between the physician and the parents, you can say that the risk of asthma is much more higher than the normal population. There are different types of wheezing, uh, even you cannot just label them. And all this noisy breathing coming from blocked nose or congestion, or even from a throat infection can be a confusing factor. So what about physicians? The second part, uh, Costas mentioned about these and all these tables and these frequencies. Is it visa rattle? What are the additional findings? Is it localized? We should be careful about foreign body aspiration. There are so many children diagnosed as asthma, but have foreign body aspiration, especially in the Mediterranean countries. There are some studies uh, showing is there any uh, way to distinguish different viral infections? For example, uh, at the A uh, column, you are seeing influenza, and B, it's RSV. So you can see here, in, if you hear wheezing, the risk of this child having RSV is higher, but in influenza, there is no high risk when you look at these studies. Wheezing is a multiple seven times higher risk for asthma diagnosis. Uh, in conclusion, um, many cultures do not have a word for wheeze. Nearly half of the parents struggle to identify wheezing sounds. Doctors fear patients will be undertreated 
due to the unawareness of wheezing. Wait and see approach may cause delayed intervention to prevent attacks. Physicians hesitate, they will miss any underlying diagnosis, mainly pneumonia. So take home message for me, my lecture is, it's important to clarify the sound heard by the parents and even by doctors. We need to standardize it. Artificial intelligence may help us to overcome barriers and we scan seems to be the first step. Maybe we should be following Omron for the next steps. Thank you for your attention. And I'd like to continue to, uh, uh, by introducing the Wii scan itself. And I'll show it to you. This is the Wii scan. It's 12 centimeter long. And I will show it to you later during my presentation and show you what uh, kind of uh, things you can do with it. Where I would like to start is this already somewhat older study uh, from Fernando Martinez. What many of you know is that he started a birth cohort of about 1,000 children. And after three years, it appears that one third of these children had wheezing during one period or more periods in their life. This is a very important study, but what you have to know about it, it's very nice, but uh, you can only use these terms in retrospect. Uh, it doesn't help you if uh, you are in your office and you see a, a wheezing child in front of you, uh, and it, it doesn't give a clue about the future of the wheeze of this child. And this is what we know about wheeze. One in three children wheeze before their third birthday. The cumulative prevalence of wheeze at age six years is 50%. And it's quite an expensive disease. Preschool wheeze uh, utilizes 0.50% of the total healthcare budget uh, from the United Kingdom. Wheeze can be uh, interpreted differently when reported retrospectively versus real time or prospectively and other factors may also play a role such as in, in the environmental context and the cultural context. What for us is important is the, the agreement between parents and, and healthcare providers. This study showed that in 55% there was disagreement between parents and physician assessment of wheeze in children. And a somewhat uh, later study from 2004 from the group from Lowy that found that lung function in children with physician-confirmed wheeze was significantly lower than lung function in children with only parental reported wheeze. That indicates that maybe if physicians uh, establish the diagnosis of wheeze, confirm wheeze, uh, that means that maybe these children are worse off later in life. Predictors for asthma may differentiate between groups, but in all these cases that I mentioned, uh, they increase the chance to develop asthma. However, there is overlap between uh, the groups that were investigated. And up to uh, now, uh, there uh, is no diagnostic available for uh, daily practice, and certainly not for parents. And uh, what I would like to do now is step to the Wii scan, the new development. And uh, again, I'll try to show it to you again. It's 12 centimeter. Up here, you can see uh, the membrane. There is only one button on it. Uh, it it uh, has a uh, Bluetooth receiver and um, it has two indicator, we, indicators, Wii's a lead life indicator of no wheeze. It detects wheeze for patients of four months to seven year old. It uh, consists of this handset with a built-in microphone. You can place it under the right collarbone. It detects uh, a wheezing sound. And as I told you, it says wheeze or no wheeze. So it's, it's quite a simple device. Omron Healthcare has created this unique center and the algorithm that can detect the presence of uh, wheeze. It was validated of, uh, among children suspected to have asthma or bronchitis. The sensitivity is 0.95% uh, and specificity is 0.90, which is really nice. 
then I will come to my uh, last uh, slide. In the first place, the Wii scan, which is very easy to handle. Again, here you can see what I told you before. The on-off button, the only button of the device, the indicators for Wii's or no Wii's, and the uh, receiver of the Bluetooth. It does not replace the stethoscope. Stethoscope so is a tool for physician, and this uh, Wii scan is a tool meant uh, for parents. And uh, parents uh, shouldn't be bothered with a stethoscope. It does not measure severity. From the uh, physicians that use this uh, little tool already in their uh, clinic and outpatient clinic, we know that the scan detects wheeze, but even if you have given a number of times a bronchodilator such as uh, salbutamol or albuterol, it's still, if the uh, wheezing sound is uh, very weak, it still detects this sound. So you cannot use it to measure uh, the severity, for instance, of an asthma attack. There uh, are apps to support this new tool. You can download them for free in the App Store or the Play Store. It automatically syncs uh, with the WeScan uh, device and the app is compatible with the device uh, uh, parents get. There is a notification function that can remind you to give uh, the medication uh, the doctor has prescribed. Parents can record major symptoms uh, in the app. And of course, this is all meant to make communication with your doctor easy and, and more clear. Okay, thank you very much.